Please listen carefully. In this question, you will be asked to talk about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Describe changes in technology that have affected your life and explain what effect they have had on you as a student. Include details and examples to support your explanation. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Please listen carefully. In this question, you will be asked to give your opinion about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. What kind of friend is better? One who is very similar to you or one who is very different? Which kind of friend do you prefer and why? Include details and examples in your explanation. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Please listen carefully. In this question, you will read a short passage about a campus situation and then listen to a conversation on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the conversation. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. The University of the Rockies is announcing its annual job fair. Read the announcement from the Career Services Center. You will have 45 seconds to read the announcement. Begin reading now. Now listen to two students as they discuss the announcement. Are you going to register to attend the job fair? I'm not sure. 
I'd like the experience of living abroad, but I need a well-paid job to pay back my student loan. Not all the jobs pay that well. Some do. Yeah, but the ones that pay well want experienced teachers. I've only done my student teaching, and that isn't enough. But you're certified to teach science, so you can probably get a job just about anywhere. You know, because of the shortage of science teachers. Um, I still think I need more experience. You also won first prize in the science teaching competition for your uh, your inquiry-based science project. Surely that'd count in the job market. Maybe, but I think that you ought to register. The service is free. The recruitment people come to campus, so you don't have to travel to an interview. You always said you'd like to work abroad, and here's the opportunity. Then, if you aren't offered anything, at least you get the experience of having interviews, and you can apply again after you get some teaching experience. The man expresses his opinion about whether the woman should attend the job fair. State his opinion and explain the reasons he gives for his opinion. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Please listen carefully. In this question, you will read a short passage on an academic subject and then listen to part of a lecture on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the lecture. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Read the passage about misconceptions in mathematics. You have 45 seconds to read the passage. Begin reading now. Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic in a math education class. Misconceptions about sitting now arithmetic are not readily given up. Uh, so, for example, a child who believes that one-fourth is larger than one-half will not let go of this misconception when he or she gets back an assignment full of red correction marks. Uh, the child will let go of this misconception when he or she fully understands fractions. So, how do we develop this understanding? 
I think this situation is partly caused by the practice in many schools of teaching mathematics by rote. In other words, uh, children are taught to, to memorize a formula, to practice using that formula, and then go on to the next one. Children start to believe that math is boring and work through problems without understanding the nature of the concepts. Uh, so, what happens is that kids can work a problem only if they remember the formula. Using the rote method of teaching doesn't take into account the child's pre-knowledge or informal knowledge of mathematics. Um, even a small child can tell the difference between a whole cookie and a half a cookie. So, using this informal knowledge is, is, is a very important part of helping children learn fractions or other math concepts for that matter. Teachers tend to forget they must put these concepts into daily situations that children can relate to. Using real objects, children can come up with the formula themselves. And having done that, the children learn and understand the formulas better. It's also true that teachers too often assume that children understand the mathematical symbols being used. Uh, for example, the symbol for percentages. Unfortunately, too often, that is an incorrect assumption. The professor describes the mistakes that are made in teaching children mathematics. Explain how these mistakes relate to the problems that children have in understanding fractions. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Please listen carefully. In this question, you will listen to a conversation. You will then be asked to talk about the information in the conversation and to give your opinion about the ideas presented. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to a conversation between two students. Sally, why the frown? Uh, Don, I have been trying to learn this list of vocabulary words, and I'm just getting nowhere. Here, take the list and ask me one of the words. You'll see. Okay. How about arthropoda? Um, oh, those creepy crawly things? But what kind of creepy crawly things? Snakes? No, 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 like spiders and scorpions. Right. See? You do know at least one word. So, how did you remember it? I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's because it starts with A, and I've managed to memorize the A words. But look at how long the list is. Okay. Well, I learned it by remembering that arthro means joints, like the disease arthritis affects the joints. And pod means foot, like a tripod for setting a camera on. I always try to connect new words with the words I already know. So, arthropoda refers to all those creatures that have lots of jointed feet. Oh, 
okay, well, that's pretty easy. Although, you know what? Now that I think about it, I kind of remember picturing all of the creatures in my mind every time I said the word. Ah, you mean visualizing them. That's a good way of remembering, making a mental picture. You could try color coding your words too, like a traffic light. That helps me. Okay, what's that? What do you mean by color coding the words? Go through the list and, for example, color all the words you know well green because you can pass by them. And the words you kind of know yellow, and the words you really don't know red. Then focus on the red words. You stop at them and think about them. Of course, you don't have to use those colors. That's just my coloring system. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. Um, got any other ideas? Sure. Make a song or a poem out of them. Like,、uh, let's see. An arthropod with arthritis met a cephalopod with sinusitis. Okay, wait. What is a cephalopod and what does it have to do with sinusitis? Well, cephalo has to do with a head, right? Like the disease encephalitis is an inflammation of the brain. And a cephalopod is a big headed creature, like an octopus, for example. So a cephalopod with sinusitis would have a really bad sinus headache. <laughs> okay, I see. So、um, finish your poem. Oh,、um, uh, I've forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs>The students discuss several ways to memorize vocabulary. Summarize the ways. Then state which of the ways you prefer and explain why. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Please listen carefully. In this question, you will listen to part of a lecture. You will then be asked to summarize important information from the lecture. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to part of a lecture in an earth science class. Of course, you're all familiar with rainbows. Perhaps the most beautiful of the atmospheric phenomena. However, there are other interesting but but less common phenomena that I will be speaking about today. These are produced when light from the sun, or sometimes from the moon, passes through hexagonal shaped or six-sided ice crystals. These ice crystals refract, that is, bend the light in the atmosphere. Imagine that the crystals are prisms bending each wavelength of light at a different angle. I want to describe three different phenomena that occur depending on the ice crystal's orientation towards the surface of the Earth. How the crystals are arranged in relation to the Earth.、Oh, okay, so the the first phenomenon is a ring called a halo. This happens when the ice crystals are randomly scattered in the atmosphere. If the light enters these crystals, randomly scattered crystals, the light is dispersed around the sun or moon and is seen as a ring around the light source. 
So halos occur when the ice crystals that the light shines through are randomly dispersed in the atmosphere. Okay. Sometimes, however, the ice crystals are oriented horizontally instead of randomly. Now, this causes a different phenomenon. If the sun is low in the sky and its light shines through horizontal ice crystals, we see two bright spots on either side of the sun. These are called sun dogs and are seen at an angle of 22 degrees from the sun. Both halos and sun dogs are caused by refraction of light. The third phenomenon is a sun pillar. Around sunrise or sunset, you might see a shaft of light stretching either upwards or downwards from the sun. A sun pillar. Unlike halos and sun dogs, though, with sun pillars, sunlight reflects, not refracts, off horizontally aligned ice crystals that are gently falling through the atmosphere. Using the information in the lecture, explain the three atmospheric phenomena that the lecturer discusses. You may begin to prepare your response after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep.